Hi, my name's Mark Heath, and in this video, we're going to have a look at a few more link methods that are slightly different from most of the others in that these aren't extension methods on iEnumerable, but they're static methods designed to help you generate your own iEnumerable sequences. So first of all, let's look at generate. Generate takes a starting value and then a you provide a function that from the previous value you calculate the next. And this can be of any type, but I'm generating a sequence of integers starting with three. And then the next value is the previous one times four. So we'll have three, 12 and 48 and so on. And this generates an unending sequence. So we'll just take the first five elements and look at that. And we can see as we expect three, 12, 48 and so on. Generate by index, you provide a function and you're given an incrementing index starting at zero. And you can select any object that you like here. I'm selecting a string that just says item and then the number. So if we run this and look at the first five items, we see zero, one, two, three, and so on. Sequence allows us to produce an enumerable sequence starting at a start value and going up to an end value. So sequence 510, We'll return 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we provide a step value in the third parameter, we're going up in steps of size two. So we'll go five, seven, nine. The next would be 11, but that's beyond our end value. So we stop. Repeat takes an input sequence. So here, A, B, C, three strings, and repeats them the set number of times. So I'm saying repeat four times. If I run that, ABC, 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 ABC. And I can also pass it um, without providing a number of repeats, in which case it will just repeat indefinitely. So I'll get an endless sequence. And so I'm just going to take the first 10 items here and we'll see ABC repeating and stopping after I've taken 10 items. The next function is called unfold. And if you've done some functional programming, you might be familiar with the concepts of fold and unfold. This one is a little bit more complicated, but it's very powerful. In it, you provide an initial state object. And so my state is a tuple of zero and one, which I've named A and B. And then you use that state to calculate what the next result in the sequence should be. That's what the result selector does. However, you also can calculate the next state. So you can provide a new updated value of the state, and that's what the state selector does. And you can also decide whether the sequence should keep going. That's what this predicate does. And finally, there's also a function called the generator. And what the generator does is it allows you to take the state that you're maintaining as you're generating this sequence and use that state to generate a temporary object that will be used as the input to these three functions. And that saves these three functions from having to calculate the same thing um, as each other if they need to make use of some kind of calculation. However, in our example, I don't really need to do any transformation of the state. So I'm just returning the same state object I was passed in the generator. And then the state is given to each of these three functions. So initially, the state is zero comma one, the predicate looks at it and my predicate is saying keep going unless the first value is greater than or equal to 30 and it's not so um, we are going to keep going. Then my state selector is going to get the chance to um, generate the new state and I'm going to say the new state is the second value so 1 followed by both values added together so 0 add 1 is 1. My next state will be 1 comma 1. And then finally, I get to do my result selector to say what the next value in the sequence is. And the next value in the sequence is the two values in my state added together, which will initially be 0, 1. So 1 will be the first number that comes out. But if you remember, the next state was 1, 1. So the next result will be 2, 1 plus 1. Now, if you're mathematically minded, you may well have guessed what I'm actually doing in this function. I'm generating the Fibonacci series. So let's run this and see what we get. And you can see we get 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. You can see that each result is the sum of the previous two numbers. 
you can see that it stopped when the first of the previous two values, so the state at this point will have been 34,55, and that's why we stopped at this point. And to be able to implement this sequence, for every step that we go through in the sequence, we've been maintaining as our state object the previous two. So here, when we're emitting eight, the previous two objects in the state are three and five. And so although it can be a bit hard to get your head around, this is quite a complex method, it's a really powerful one and allows you to generate all kinds um, of interesting sequences, particularly for things that are a bit mathematical like this.